First up on the chopping block, we have the 750 Ti from Gamewood. Is this real enough for you? Welcome back to Tech City. This is Baranis coming back to you guys today with a review of the 750 Ti Golden Sample from Gamewood. Now, two things really excited me about this product, and I'm going to tell you straight, guys straight away, I was really impressed with this graphics card. Uh, one was that Maxwell. I got to try the Maxwell architecture and see how good it was in terms of power efficiency. And two, I got to try a card from Gamewood, my first ever graphics card from Gamewood. And man, was I impressed. But anyway, let's get on first of all with the build quality and the features of this graphics card, then we'll move on to some benchmarks and a conclusion. So first up, as soon as I unboxed this graphics card, I was immediately impressed with the build quality. I mean, I picked the card up, uh, shook it around, and there was absolutely no rattling at all. Everything felt really solid and well put together. The card weighed in at about 500 grams, and man, was I just impressed with the cosmetics of this graphics card. I mean, it looks really damn sleek. On the top here, we have minimal styling, just a nice clean and uh, black look to the card. It's got uh, two 80 millimeter fans on the top here, which sound very quiet in operation. It has minimal branding with the Gamewood logo on the top there, a little G, and a golden sample GS in gold with GeForce GDX 750 Ti written on the side there. So that's the front of the card. Moving over to the rear of the card, we have a VGA connection here, which <laughs> personally I wish they'd just get rid of it. I never use it personally. I mean, do any of you guys ever use a VGA connector? If so, let me know. Uh, in the middle here, the most important, that's the dual DVI port, which will support 120 frames per second. Uh, on the left here, we have a mini HDMI port, which if I was to critique something about this card, I'd be critiquing this because personally I don't have a mini HDMI cable I usually use full H full size HDMI cables and if you use a mini H the problem is if you put in a mini HDMI connector you then will maybe hit be hitting a dual uh, the DVI port if you're using both the connections so that's something to keep in mind there uh, on the rear of the car we as you can see though it is a full uh, dual slot sized cooler as well so if you are installing this uh, card into a mini itx rig be mindful of that as i wasn't uh, moving on to the, the rear of the card we have here a black pcb and man it's a full rich jet black so it looks really good uh, we've got the aluminium heat sink uh, covered in a nice overlay with a black little metallic heat sink there so again this is made of metal on the back here not plastic which is something i really like and something that game would have really paid attention to. Uh, over there on the side here, you can see there's they've used a nice, uh, very clean looking aluminum heat sink as well. And boy, does this thing do a great job of cooling. I could not even get this card past 65 degrees Celsius in like the middle of summer at 30 degrees Celsius uh, ambient temperatures, which kudos to Gamewood. It cooled really well and this was an auto fan speeds I didn't even touch the fan speeds and that was with my max overclock as well so that was really good uh, let's talk about the overclocks though before we get into the benchmarks this graphics card Wow as soon as I pulled it out of the box I hooked it up and it was the fastest ever graphics card I've had that's out of the box that's overclocked so high uh, this thing ran at 1333 megahertz without me even touching a thing and that was just so damn impressive. I mean, that's like almost 30% more than a reference card. And you don't even have to do anything. And the temperatures don't get affected. And the power draw wasn't really that much extra as well. So really damn impressive. The noise, minimal at best. Uh, you couldn't even hear it. It's the same as my GDX 780 Lightning. But that's a 1.5 kg cooler on that thing. So the Maxwell, the build quality of this card, game would get a big thumbs up. Anyway, let's move on now to the benchmarks where I do have the overclocked results and the, the reference results. However, keep in mind that the overclock, I only managed to pull an extra 42 megahertz on the uh, core and only an extra 100 megahertz on the memory. So I couldn't even get that much extra out of this card. That's how aggressively overclocked this thing was uh, from the factory, which is really good. Anyway, let's move on now to the benchmarks. 
So the first benchmark here we have is Crisis 3, and this is done at Ultra at 1080p. I think both the 750Ti and the R9 270 are both sort of 1080p graphics cards. If you want to step it up to 1440p, then you may have to look at a 780 or an R9 290X or something like that. But let's look at the results here. The GDX 780 Lightning Overclocks just for reference, but that managed to score 67.2 frames per second. Uh, at reference speed, it scored 60.24. Uh, now the GDX 750Ti Overclocked, it scored 24.72 uh, when it wasn't overclocked and that was when it was basically I only overclocked an extra 42 megahertz because that's all I could get but when it wasn't overclocked it scored 24.48 and that was damn impressive out of the box it even managed to come into the territory of the R9 270 which scored 26.52 out of the box however the R9 270 did overclock a lot better it did scale better and it got up to 30 frames per second when I overclocked that uh, one thing to keep in mind though, the 750Ti uses a lot less power than either of these two graphics cards and it also runs a lot cooler than either of these two graphics cards. Uh, so let's move on now to the next uh, benchmark we have here and that's the Battlefield 4 benchmark, Ultra 1080p. The overclocked, um, sorry I've got these mixed up, the GDX 780 overclocked scored 153.2 frames per second, it just blitzed again. Uh, the 750Ti though, out of the box, this was the most interesting thing, it scored 69.52 and it managed managed to compete with the R9 270 in Battlefield 4, which only scored 65.84. However, when we overclocked the R9 270, it scored 72.88, and the overclocked 750 Ti only scored 71.28. Uh, but one thing to keep in mind was that this 750 Ti was sort of competing, it was trading blows with the R9 270, which is something I didn't expect at all. Uh, let's move on now to the next uh, game, um, sorry, next game, the next benchmark, and this is Unigine Valley, and the, let's look at the FPS scores here. The GDX 780 Lightning scored 73.8 frames per second. That was just huge. This is the Extreme HD preset as well. Uh, the 750 Ti managed to score 24.9 and 24.2 when it wasn't overclocked. The R9 270 did beat it uh, in this in this particular benchmark by a, by a bit, and that was 31.4 when it was overclocked, 34.2. Uh, moving on now to the scores, they're pretty much correlated to the FPS, so there's nothing really big there. The GDX 780 scoring a beast score there of 3,000, and the 780, uh, 750 Ti scoring 1,041, and the R9 270 scoring 1,430 when they were overclocked. Uh, let's move now to the 3D Mark 11 performance preset tests, and the 750 Ti here, it managed to the GPU score. These are the main scores I'm gonna be looking at because the CPU score and the combined scores tend to relate to um, well, they tend to have a bit of variance, but the GPU scores are generally pretty solid. So the 750Ti managed to score around about 6,000. The R9 270, when it was overclocked, scored over uh, 8,300, which was impressive. Uh, the R9 270 at reference scored 7,570. And the GDX 780 overclocked, man, that thing was a beast at 16,221. Uh, reference speed, it was 14,282. So uh, overall, these scores here represent generally the, the I guess, the the max graphics power these things have and the 750 ti does impress i mean considering how little power it uses so last up here we have power consumption and this was done during unigene and i just tested it with my power meter from the wall and we see here that the 750 ti did look impressive i mean the the graphs here it scored 234 watts uh, it used 234 watts from the wall when it was overclocked. The 780 Lightning managed to score 542, which was pretty damn huge. I mean, this thing loves to chug power when it's overclocked. Uh, the R9 270 overclocked, that managed to chug 341 watts. Now, this is total uh, system or total power consumption from the system I'm using, which is a 4.6 gigahertz overclocked um, Haswell CPU, we've got four sticks of RAM, we've got an Intel NIC on that motherboard, we've got uh, all my USB ports are pretty much uh, being used, and I've got three hard drives and a DVD drive as well. So you can see there that the 750 Ti, in this case, it doesn't shine as hard as it would if it was coupled with a Pentium or, and two sticks of RAM on a mini ITX rig. So uh, that'll, be, that'll be a base of my conclusion anyway. So let's move on now to the conclusion. In conclusion, I didn't even know where to begin. This thing absolutely knocked my pants off. And it almost knocked my underwear off too. But uh, this thing, wow, out of the factory, 1333 megahertz. The most aggressively overclocked graphics card I've ever pulled out of a box. Uh, next up, the build quality. My god, this thing is really well built. It's quiet, it's cool, 
and it just looks awesome as well. Uh, the last thing, I guess when you couple that with the Maxwell architecture, it really does impress. I mean, this thing had absolutely uh, next to no power draw when we compared it to the other two graphics cards. I mean, couple this thing, and I'm going to be doing this in my next video where I'm coupling the Pentium and I'm pairing the Pentium against the, G, uh, the 4670K, but this thing, when you put it in a mini ITX rig, it shines. And it, have, it uses little to no power, couple it with low power draw Pentium, and you get yourself one efficient gaming machine, especially for 1080p gaming. Now, another thing that impressed me was the, I mean, it's only $150, and it was pretty much trading blows with the R9 270 in some cases. I mean, an R9 270X, I would expect it to beat this by quite a bit. However, an R9 270, this thing was shooting in the same ballpark, which was actually really damn impressive. So kudos to Gamewood for releasing an epic card. I'm going to be recommending these things a bit more in the future, probably a lot more in the future. The golden sample name is legit, and keep in mind that this was a retail sample. I did not get sent this from anyone. Uh, it just, wow, impressive anyway. So in conclusion, I will say this is a highly recommended buy. It is a bit long, however, so if you're fitting it in some mini ITX rigs, you may wish to uh, check out the size. I managed to measure it in at about 22 centimeters in length. So keep in mind, it is quite a long card. However, it is well built and it is hell worth the money. Anyway, if you like this review, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, subscribe to Tech Yes City. Become a yes man today. Anyway, if you have any questions about this graphics card, let me know in the comments below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Anyway, peace out for now. I'm going to be bringing you guys the Pentium video very soon. I know you're looking, at, looking forward to it anyway. And I'll give you guys a sneak preview. The Pentium runs really well with this 750 Ti anyway. Uh, anyway, peace out for now, and let's roll that outro. Bye.